thank you very much for uh, such a warm welcome and uh, welcome to presentation. First time is the charm as this is, so let's see if that's true. Okay, so who are we? I'm Alash and we are the Tasty Team and we even have a beer. Um, of course, that's a creative uh, director, uh, creative project manager, Julian. Uh, you can contact us on LinkedIn or Facebook if you want. The challenge we chose was 3D printing food mainly because it's an exciting technology and that has great potential to change the world and be potentially disruptive in the food industry. It has relatively high TRL level, which is technology readiness level level, and uh, so it's applicable in space. It works in microgravity, as was shown by Made in Space. It is becoming more and more affordable and widespread among people, not food, but for generally 3D printing and it is very open source driven so many people improve the 3D printers and go on give out uh, patents why do we care? well there's so much food waste and so much hunger and so much pollution that we simply do need to act now in order to change so what can we do? well we can end the world hunger for example with this technology remove the middleman from uh, food production or distribution cycle we can end overpopulation because more nurtured populace will uh, decrease uh, the reproduction rate and move on to a higher level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We can save the planet by reducing the resource and energy consumption of the food industry. We can effectively battle the climate change. Okay, so how does it work? What do you need? We need sunlight or electricity if you don't like sun. We could use your blood, organic matter waste, and a pink bracelet, which is a different uh, project altogether, but it basically sits on your wrist, draws the blood, pushes it back in, checks the blood in real time via ultrasound and spectrography to get the real image of your blood flow, determining what nutrients you need, which is especially important in astronauts. Uh, because of the calcium laws that you need, microgravity, etc. Okay, so printing versus growing. This challenge was specific for printing, but growing makes sense on a space station. Why? Because it's uh, the higher yields, uh, easy setup, and of course you get this nice looking light, which is very uh, conducive to astronaut well, astronaut well being. Okay, once you have your organic food waste, you can use the Melissa system, which is a semi-closed life support system that is used uh, in aerospace. Uh, it's not perfect, but you can use pieces of it to uh, reclaim and repurpose some of the proteins found in your waste. The rest you can use to feed the insects or plants, whether you decide to use it or not, it's up to you. Okay, then it's simply taking the astronauts' stem cells, converting them into uh, muscle cells, and growing your steak. Okay, it's, I say simply, but that's it. That's how it's done. Then you simply layer it, print it, uh, or spray it depending on, or drip it, depending on the type of food you are making, so, you know, in order to make it real fast as a process. This is how it looks like. I'll guide you through the image. You can see the sun, it shines at your urine and through a wonderful system that has been created even in Africa, you can create hydrogen and H2O from it. You use the H2O to feed the algae. Uh, the algae will create sugar that will feed the other cartridges that go inside here. One consists of fungi, second flora, third Frank, which is our astronaut. Uh, flavor, which is basically uh, small minerals and tastes that you need to infuse via ultrasonic cavitation or nitrogen cavitation into the liquids in order to make it taste good. Okay, um, organic uh, matter recycling is on the left. Uh, the door is like an oven because we want to be able to fill it with nutrients if you want to make a bulk uh, growth of bacteria or matter cells. Uh, what we need is more wise innovative team members as Julian, labs, website, management investment, 
more research, including market research, how to stop people from being opposed to this based on uh, old, sorry, old factors such as uh, yeah, it's bad, and show them that you don't kill any animals, you don't kill any plants. It is sustainable food. Thank you very much, and just wanted to show you what could be, but right. it's one second. Literally, if I manage to read this. This is not necessary? Or? No, it was replicated from Star Trek, you know that. Okay, thank okay. you very much. So who, who would actually eat it? Yeah, like okay. Uh, on your side. Remember that they say you are what you eat, so don't you want to be yourself? <laughs> <laughs> There's some. Uh, oh, you eat what you are. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> so questions. Oops. <laughs> so is there your? Mainly in, in a, in a pre-prototyping phase, you have a yes. great idea and, and a, a, a cycle which probably might work, so you're looking for uh, yeah, further factors, opportunities to... Yeah, exactly. All the technology is there, all the technology is at least lab tested, so uh, it's ready to be basically implemented and engineered in one system. I think probably the really interesting thing is, 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 is the, the cycle for itself because 3D footprinting isn't really new as you and mm -hmm. companies like Foodini, for example. Yeah. Uh, but to find a, 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 a cycle, uh, um, including your, your, your internal uh, blood factors or, or behaviors, or probably your know, internal needs, uh, which might create. It sounds really, really innovative. Okay. It could be uh, a yak factor as well to some people because you're eating clones of the cells eventually and it could be danger there and, or there could be speculations about danger there but in the end uh, it's more, more, most natural cell for you to eat. Uh, sorry, was there a question? Uh, yeah, the question is the, the circle for itself, yeah. how could the circle work? The circle is well worked out in Melissa but um, as it was indicated, it should work that way. Uh, I'm not saying it's 100% lossless, there still needs to be some input, some fresh water, up until the level is brought to a place where it's 100%. You know, we, we, we all wish that it would be 100%. Uh, but, but you mentioned in, in, your, in, 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 yeah. in your picture, because there was one tank that contains algae. Yes. And they only need uh, CO2, as far as I know. For well, some, some <laughs> CO2, uh, water, and some sugar. I They, Sorry, Melissa is used in the space already for. I do believe parts of it are running on themselves. Well, they, they are already recycling urine into water. They are doing 93% of recycling of urine, for example. Okay. Uh, with this system, you could do 100% of urine. Because you're converting uh, urine into electricity, hydrogen, and water. Uh, the ammonia that's left over, you can feed to fishes or algae. Yes. Uh, hackathons usually consist of coming in with coming in with a coming out with a. <coughs> yes. So what did you create during this weekend? This whole the whole thing. Whole thing yeah. okay. I came up with the idea on Friday to be honest, but uh, okay. I didn't do any work or research. On that. Yeah. I had some research done. I mean, I'm interested in high tech so, mm -hmm. and space. So. Okay. I see a, a huge ethical issue with the. Yes. Uh, how would you um, yeah, uh, how would you react uh, to I'm sorry, I'm the, uh, how would you go and uh, make uh, make your idea working because you have a lot of regulations, uh, well, ethics commission, and I also think NASA would have here a, a huge issue if you use stem cells. The thing is, I'm not using embryotic stem cells, but I'm using stem cells filtered out of the astronaut's blood that are then, uh, and there is no ethical issue. The These application is connected to the embryos. You're using things from, from a human body, and if you yes. do that, for example, in Austin, you have to go through an ethics commission. If yes. you do an experiment like that, it's yes. always a huge issue. So, um, it, is, it is an issue, uh, I think education and the potential should speak for itself. 
Uh, however, as I mentioned, there is market research specifically aimed at this problem. We discover how people can be persuaded to eat flower for insects uh, eat their own poo uh, to be crude about it and use the blood as a source for sustenance as well. I know it's not going to be easy, but that's the challenge. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.